Hey guys! Hello! <laughs> this is Laura. Um, big running dog. Oh my god. Down the that was road. so scary. <laughs> and this is Robin. Hey. People are scattered all over the river as two rafts are flip on the same rapid. So we are grabbing people, trying to pull them on a raft. You're about to watch the Coromandel video, uh, the Driving Creek Train. You guys didn't go, did you? No, we didn't. No. I did go. It was an <laughs> awkward video to make. <laughs> so let's watch it now. You know, we almost didn't get onto this train. Luckily, we did. We got in at the last minute. This is Driving Creek Railway, Coromandel. And the first thing I have to do is ask our driver what's with the name Driving Creek? Okay, I got the name Driving Creek from the process they used to get the large Cody trees from the top of the hills. And so, pretty much what would happen is um, these things would get chopped down. Uh, they would actually roll them into the creek or tow them into a creek. They'd make a dam and stockpile 15 or 20 of these big massive trees behind the dam, yeah. release the dam, and boom, the way you, all these uh, Cody trees would just go screaming down the dam valley. And that process was actually, was actually called driving. Oh. Yeah. Unlike other railways though, this one has a little bit of a surprise for you. It appears we are now going backwards. This railway zigzags up and down the mountain, back and forward, back and forward. And there's no shortage of things for you to look at on this little wee railway tour. You've got pottery all over the place, more on that later and you've got bridges, and you've got dark tunnels, and then you've got the retaining walls. The people that built this railway made the retaining walls out of glass bottles and tires. Now that's good in terms of like recycling, reusing, sustainability, all of that good stuff, but it makes you wonder, what about the alcoholism? Who was drinking all these bottles of beer? That's a lot of alcohol. And it's not just one train that's coming around the mountain. There's other trains that are going up and down. You're sharing the tracks with them and you're going to find uh, other chances to say hi to the other trains going past. In addition to all the cool scary tunnels, you're going to see a lot of your driver going in and out and in and out and back and forward and back and forward and changing the tracks. So you sort of wonder to yourself, oh man, the driver must be getting a bit tired, you know, doing that all day long. And then you get to see this really cool wall. It reminds you of something Aztec or Mayan. And it's at this point when everyone gets let out. The driver lets everybody out and everyone's having a look at this really cool wall and taking photos next to the wall and you've got a great view out there of the harbors. And it's at this point I'm thinking, oh, I've got to have a look at this train track. So I walk up and down, have a look at the train track. And then you get to the top and we hear the story about Barry. Uh, so on graduation, he got a placement at the local uh, school in Coromandel here. Uh, and he only lasted two terms. He just had enough, couldn't handle it. So that actually forced Barry to follow his true passion. And that was the clay arts. So back in the day, Barry was quite a common sight to be walking through the hills, digging holes in random people's paddocks uh, in, in search of clay. So basically he would just dig a hole, find the clay, whirl it back to his pottery studio and away he'd go. Now uh, it was back in the very early 1970s where he actually stumbled across two very large uh, terracotta clay deposits at the bottom of the hill. So he got all excited, ran to the bank, got a $7,500 loan and purchased the 24 hectares that we're standing on now. So that, uh, that set Barry's um, mind in motion. And so basically he was very eccentric, uh, extremely creative. So uh, instead of doing it the easy way, he decided he'll build himself a train, drive the train to the clay, load it up, and then drive the train back to his pottery studio. So that was the birth of the, uh, of the train line as we sort of know it now. Uh, so then uh, a couple of interesting facts is, so if we just turn around and face the car park, if you just imagine that was all as uh, farmland. So uh, Barry being very creative in left field, he thought 
uh, I'm going to make two big batches of home brew. And so he made two big batches, gave one big batch to the local plant nursery in exchange for 29,000 native trees. And he gave the second batch to the local sporting groups. And that's how those 29,000 trees were actually planted. So what we're actually looking at is a second regeneration hand planted native forest. It's actually quite special. It's pretty much the only one of this type and of this size in the whole of New Zealand. Well that was Driving Creek. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. I thought that this was going to be quite uneventful but the thing that made it a bit different was actually the fact that it's not this kind of straight railway where you just go in the straight line forever and ever and ever. It actually had back and forward and back and forward and back and forward. And that alone makes it a little bit different. I haven't been on a railway tour like that before where they do that. So, yeah, a bit expensive, but it's also something different. Thanks for watching. Should we do that as a background, maybe? Yeah. <laughs>